What's up guys, it's Georgia Kate. Welcome back to my channel. It's been two weeks since I have graced you all with my unsolicited opinions. Last time we spoke, I had fucked my knee and thankfully it is not broken. We got that bitch x-rayed and it is all intact in terms of the bone, but the soft tissue is still actively sore. And yeah, I think we did some pretty severe damage, but I'm no longer hobbling around. I'm walking quite well. I'm not running. <laughs> We're just giving that a miss for now. I may have got back on the skateboard. Don't judge me. But yeah, the leg is feeling much much better we're back at work or we were because uh the next issue to spring forth in my crazy life is that a staff member at my work has tested positive for covid19 and guess who they worked with when they were at work tier one or at least i think i'm tier one i've got a test today not pleased at all uh because if you don't already know i also live with two small humans whom i take care of uh, i also live in a high-rise apartment with a cat and we are all locked up for two weeks or at least i think we will be i'm still awaiting work to call me and sort of confirm that i'm tier one because there's a new risk assessment system 18 people so far that are currently isolating on my floor with four anesthetic nurses left so that is the burden on the healthcare system that we are speaking of that you are hearing so much about. Staff on sick leave. Crazy to think that you would need medical professionals around if you want to get cared for in hospital, you know? But the fuck do I know, you know what I'm saying? Stay tuned, watch this space, or follow my Instagram so you stay up to date on the drama that is Georgia Kate's life. So that's fun, legs healed, but life continues to be fucked. So as you must already know by the epic thumbnail and the title of this video. Today we are examining the transphobia of Dave Chappelle because that's what it is I'm afraid as much as I hate to admit it Dave Chappelle is transphobic and I will utilize this video to tell you why although I don't really think I need to prove that point. I quite like Dave Chappelle. I grew up with Dave Chappelle and before I was enlightened, as in before I educated myself on my own white privilege, women's rights and the rights of those who are oppressed, other minority groups, I tended to be homophobic, transphobic, racist, sexist, like I had internalized misogyny and it was all relatively unconscious because that was the society I was raised in. That was the way that my parents raised me they would never admit to that but there's all these biases and these tendencies that stem from systemic racism and sexism and homophobia and transphobia like it's ingrained in our cishet normative society a couple of terms to clarify before we delve into trans issues cis to identify as cis cis is to identify with the gender that you were assigned at birth. So you got a vagina, you <laughs> identify as female. Het, cis het, heterosexual, you know, heteronormative. It's like, you know, the norm is heterosexual, binary, gender that is assigned to you at birth that is your correct gender so anyway we're talking about dave chappelle and the special the closer this is his last special for netflix don't know if we'll hear from him again he definitely promised us that he will never be talking about the LGBTQIA plus community again until we are both laughing, which I quite liked. I like that line. I hope it's true. <laughs> Not all of it was problematic to me. I found some things funny and then some things extremely cringy and problematic. So we're gonna watch a few of them. I don't think Netflix allows us to screen record. So if not, I will just put the audio in. So we'll watch the jokes. I will give you my opinion on those specific jokes that I find to be problematic. And then we will have a little chit chat at the end. I'm trying not to keep these videos too long. Okay, so keep watching. <laughs> 
So before we get started, I just want to preface this whole thing with the fact that I'm aware that stand up is designed to push the boundaries of what's comfortable and what's not comfortable. For me, I really don't align with comedians who, to use his words, punch down on minority groups. Idiots to put it frankly, will watch this and use it to justify their transphobia and their homophobia. That's a fact. It's been seen. This type of stuff perpetuates violence against trans people. And I want to preface the fact that I believe that Dave Chappelle is a comedy genius. I believe that he is a genius at the way that he delivers his jokes. He's worked up a name for himself for a reason. He is very, very good at the way he formulates and delivers his jokes. He's also a very good storyteller. So I give credit where credit is due. He's great at comedy. He really is. The first joke that didn't hit right for me was this one. Because this body of work that I've done on Netflix, I'm going to complete. All the questions you might have had about all these jokes I've said in the last few years, I hope to answer tonight. I'd like to start by addressing the LBGTQ community directly. Okay, if you're going to act like you give a fuck about this community, at least get the acronym correct, yes? If you want to literally make amends with this community, get the fucking acronym, at least in the right order, mate. Like, say it with me, L-G-B-T-Q-I-A plus community. You might think that that is, you know, trivial shit, but it just shows me that he doesn't actually give much of a fuck. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't actually care. The first thing I did when I wanted to affirm this community was to learn the acronym and what each letter meant. And it didn't really take up much of my time. And it really wasn't that much of an effort. In our country, you can shoot and kill a nigga. But you better not hurt a gay person's feelings. Just setting it up to make the LGBT community like they are the kind of people to overreact and um, cause havoc to innocent celebrities and influencers for the slightest detail. You know, it's just invalidating the very real concerns they have about people perpetuating false narratives about them. And the issue with the baby, him equating the fact that he's killed someone with the fact that people are complaining about his jokes and how society reacts to all of that. It's a straw man argument. It's not equal whatsoever to the point at hand, which is Dave Chappelle is saying transphobic shit, which is harmful to the community. Not to be on baby's side because I think he's a dick, but <laughs> in this particular instance, when he killed someone, apparently he was defending himself. It was self-defense. So I would say that would be the reason why his career did not end in that moment. But when baby told his entire audience to hold their phones in the air, unless you have HIV and you're a gay man that has sex in car parks, uh, yeah, that's harmful and that deserves cancelling in my opinion. And when he defended himself about the statements he made at his concert, he said something along the lines of that the fans that are gay that he has don't have HIV because they're not nasty gay n-words or junkies. What? You can see how the LGBTQIA plus community would have a problem with those statements. They're extremely homophobic and uh, equating them to self-defense is literally not in the same ballpark. This is the beginning of false equivalencies and false narratives that he's perpetuating with his humor. Anyway. You guys are confusing the emotions. You think I hate gay people and what you really see is that I am jealous of gay people. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm not the only black person that feels this way. We blacks, we look at the gay community and we go, God damn it, look how well that movement is going. It's like he forgets that there are black gay people and black trans people. It's like he's equivocating whiteness with gayness and then, <laughs> and transness with whiteness, you know, like that's strange to me. It's like he's completely forgetting his own race also has different sexualities as well and gender identities. He picked up his phone and he called the police and this, this thing I'm describing is a major issue that I have with that community. Gay people are minorities until they need to be white again. (laughs) 
and being very brutally honest so we can solve this problem. I'm telling you right now, a black gay person would have never done that to me. Because a black gay person knows when the police shows up, they're not going to care who called them. So he, he makes the statement that this is the problem he has with that community. And then he acknowledges that black gay people exist because they would never call the cops. So his issue is with white people and the whole community, but he doesn't put the black gay person who wouldn't call the cops in that community. Like that makes zero sense. His issue is with white people. So why bring the LGBTQIA plus community into this argument? Because he's homophobic. I let that jab go. You should see me go, nigga. I tenderize them titties like chicken cutlets. Oh my god. I whoop the toxic masculinity out of that bitch. I don't know. This, the way he refers to women as bitches, I just fuck. I just can't. I hate it. I can't deal. Like I know he's, he uses the N word and blah blah blah, and that's his prerogative or whatever. But why? Why must we refer to women as bitches all the time? Why is that a thing? Why does that have to be a thing? Like why? Webster's defines a feminist as a human being, not a woman. A human being that believes in equal rights for women. I was shocked that that's what that meant. Because by that definition, I would consider myself a feminist. And I didn't even know that at the time. All these years, I thought it meant Frumpy Dyke. Well, that's who's always talking to be some chicken overalls. Men are trying to rape us. Ah, not you, bitch. We please. Okay, clearly we don't give a fuck about women's rights or equality for women when we're making light of rape, picking on people's appearances if they don't look or adhere to the beauty standard. I get it's a joke. I don't find it funny. I find it annoying because it's just normalizing that kind of humor and I hate sexist humor. I think it's harmful. I think it perpetuates sexism oh relax it's a joke like it's just like belittling ridiculing women there's a problem in that feminist movement isn't there from its inception in america there's always been a racial component when susan b anthony was having that meeting and sojourner truth's black ass showed up read your history books all the white women asked sojourner truth not to speak they didn't want to conflate the issues of women's rights and slavery but you know how black bitches are, so the truth went up there anyway. This is actually a good point. Feminism has been extremely whitewashed and any kind of movement tends to only put white people in the forefront of it. Not saying that that is right. That is just what happens. White people put white people in the spotlight and shove everyone else out. So Dave is highlighting something very important and some intersections between race and feminism and things like that. And it's like, it's very interesting because he's intelligent in that way, but it's just a bit disappointing because he gets so much else wrong with regard to the trans community and how to actually be a feminist and not be a fake one basically you know equal rights is learning about the plights of women and I don't think he's done an iota of research into that apart from the racial dynamics that are going on there but I think the feminist movement needs to be very successful as a male leader <laughs> I'll do it I will I will lead you women to the promised land I will make sure you get equal pay for equal work. I will make sure that nobody harasses you or fucks with you on the job. I will protect all of your interests. And all that I ask for in return is that you suck my dick. I'm just fucking tired of men discrediting women and acting like we're full of shit and acting like we're overreacting about things and not doing enough about things. And, you know, if you didn't want that to happen, why did you wear that? And why did you go to that party? And why did you put your fucking self in that position? You know, the whole Harvey Weinstein line, like maybe they didn't feel like they could because of the fucking society that they live in where people don't listen to them about their stories. 
Why do you think people fucking protest? It's just like, ugh. Yes, we are fucking back to square one because you put us there. Ugh. It's annoying. Before I even say anything about that community, you must know, and I hope you all feel the same way, I am not indifferent to the suffering of someone else. There's laws, the mean laws. In our country, North Carolina passed a law once that said a person in North Carolina must use the restroom that corresponds with the gender they were assigned on their birth certificate. No, 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 no. No, that's not a good law. That's a mean law. No American should have to present a birth certificate to take a shit at Walmart in Greensboro, North Carolina, where the baby shot and killed a motherfucker. And let's say that I'm, uh, I'm in Walmart uh, doing a little shopping with my family. And then I gotta go to the restroom. And suddenly, a woman walks into the men's room. That's strange. And then she stands shoulder to shoulder with me at the urinal. I'm like, oh, bitch, what's going on with you? <laughs> and then she hikes her skirt up and pulls a real live meaty dick out. So we begin the transphobia and obviously it's laced in humor, um, but it's speaking on things that he has no fucking idea about, continuing this narrative that trans people are like one kind of person and they're these big fucking blokes with big cocks that come in and fucking harass women in the bathroom. Like, it's not the case. Um, there's also trans men. Yeah, they come and they go to the toilet. They do not fucking use the urinals. No, they do not back it up on the urinal. Like, that's absurd. They use the cubicle. Or the gender neutral bathrooms. Like, this is a real issue for trans people using the bathrooms. It's a huge issue. Like, it's actually resulted in a lot of hate and a lot of discrimination, a lot of ridiculing public, being followed into bathrooms, being verbally harassed, physically abused about bathrooms. Just no peace around going out and using a restroom. Like, it's as simple as that. And to, to joke about it and to perpetuate stereotypes around that is so lame it's not funny and it's kind of gross and very cringeworthy I really resented that trap because that trap doesn't let me be honest if I was honest I wouldn't fall for it I just looked at the picture like look at that big chisel jawline that big thick Joe Robin neck is that a dude is your daughter a man can't say that shit it's really annoying But why was it annoying? Like, maybe she's just trying to get you to see that doesn't fucking matter that a person is a person. Like, why are you so resentful that you got tricked? Like, this is something that men have an issue with with trans people that trans women are out to trick them and to not inform them that they're trans or whatever. Like, it's completely homophobic as if a trans woman would be interested in any kind of dude like that anyway. If they are into dudes, like, there's many a sexuality out there. Weird. My people this, my people that. I said, what do you mean your people? Was y'all kidnapped in Transylvania, brought here as slaves? <laughs> False equivalencies. That's like not equivalent to what she's saying whatsoever. He keeps bringing it back to like racism and slavery and they're two separate issues. And as a person who comes from an oppressed minority group, you would think that he would be open to listening to what they have to say. Like... I've been arguing with the whites my entire career. Just when I thought I had you guys on the ropes, you changed all the rules. Oh yeah? Yeah, motherfucker. What the hell? I'm a girl now, nigger, and you must treat me as such. No, that is not what people are doing. People with gender dysphoria struggle with this for years and years and years, and they don't just fucking flip the switch to suit some white person agenda. Because again, there is people of color who are trans, trans people 
struggle with gender dysphoria. They have to live in a world, a binary world, and actively go against that on a daily basis and fight the bigotry that comes at them on a daily basis. It's not just some fucking fake bullshit thing to suit someone's agenda one day. That's harmful. I ask you, why is it easier for Bruce Jenner to change his gender than it is for Cassius Clay to change his name? Caitlyn Jenner lives now, and we are much more progressive than back then when Ali was changing his name. So different time, different context, not the same thing at all. And of course, race always, always plays a part in these things, always. And it would have been a lot harder for Muhammad Ali to change his name and to do things that he wanted to do because he was black and I'm not discrediting that. And, you know, race plays a part. Obviously, I'm not discrediting that whatsoever. I'm not making that irrelevant, but also we need to take into consider the time. Cancel J.K. Rowling, my God. J.K. Rowling wrote all the Harry Potter books by herself. She sold so many books, the Bible worries about them. And they canceled it because she said in an interview, and this is not exactly what she said, but effectually, she said, gender was a fact. And then the trans community got mad as shit. They started calling her a turf. I didn't even know what the fuck that was. But I know that trans people make up words to win arguments. It's not what they do. There's just terms that you're not familiar with because you don't fucking involve yourself in the happenings of trans people. JK Rowling is extremely transphobic. She's done a number of things to fucking invalidate the trans community and to spread misinformation about the trans community and you know, young trans people and gender dysphoria in itself. Gender as a fact is not all that she said. She wrote a whole fucking essay on transgender people. She compared hormone therapy to gay conversion therapy and to defend her. She's still sitting on a mountain of cash, by the way. The fact that she's been cancelled. No, she's been called out for her transphobia. She needs to rectify that behavior. That is why people speak out against this bullshit to stop harmful false narratives being repeated by people in power. She has a fuck ton of money and therefore she has a fuck ton of power and you know, social standing and she needs to be responsible about the words she fucking says. Ugh. Dave Strappel is making out like she's some kind of victim. What victim? Stands for trans exclusionary radical feminists. This is a real thing. This is a group of women that hate transgender. They don't hate transgender women, but they look at trans women the way we blacks might look at blackface. It offends them. Like, ooh, this bitch is doing an impression of me. Okay. Turfs are a hate group. To equate trans with being the same as blackface is so transphobic. I know I'm a white person talking about black issues and that in itself is problematic. I acknowledge that. From my research, what I've found, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm open to it, that blackface is white people making a mockery of black people, making fun of them. To insinuate that trans women are mocking real women it just completely discredits gender dysphoria is a thing. It completely takes that away and makes it seem like trans people are just cunty men. And what about the trans men? Where do they fit into that scenario? When you say you're team turf, you pretend to care about women whilst calling them bitches and laughing and joking about the Me Too movement, blaming them for their own fucking sexual assaults and shit. You claim to care about women and yet you align yourself with Team Turf, an active hate group. Like they don't give a fuck about women's issues. They actually lean very much alt-right with women's rights and abortion issues and women's issues. Many Turf groups align with conservative narratives for women. They're not real feminists. TERFs actively harass trans people on Twitter and they organise protests that have led to the violence and harassment of trans people. Like, what do you say? Like, you say you're not against trans people, but you say you're team TERF. Like, you don't think that trans women belong in the feminist groups? Like, what are you saying? Gender is a fact. You have to look at it from a woman's perspective. Look at it like this. Caitlyn Jenner, whom I've met, wonderful person, Caitlyn Jenner, 
was voted Woman of the Year. Her first year as a woman. Ain't that something? Never even had a period. Ain't that if you think that trans women are women, then you think that they should be allowed to be included in women's events and, and things that are framed around women. Caitlyn Jenner did a very brave thing to transition when she did. And I don't have a problem as a woman to include her in the category of woman. And so if she won woman of the year, happy for her. Okay. Just because someone doesn't have a period or a womb or make babies does not make them any less woman than someone who does. And this is the issue. He's not a feminist if he thinks that the only thing that defines a woman is a period and a uterus and a womb. The ability to make babies. That's a very old school way of thinking. It's a very conservative way of thinking. It puts women's values in conceiving children. What is a woman's purpose? To make a fucking baby. It also invalidates all the women who can't have children, who can't conceive, who can't have periods. There are women, believe it or not, who don't have periods, who are sterile from birth, like people who fucking menopause. Like the list goes on and when the more that you delve into that, like you think that he makes a good point when he's like, oh, you know, we're all birthed from the legs of a woman and that's what makes a real woman. So what about the women who can't have babies? Oh wait, it's a non-point and it's invalidating to trans women. If you are not transphobic, you do not say things that dehumanize and invalidate a person's gender. Like, what fucking point is he trying to make here? Except for the fact that trans people are not valid. Now, I am not saying that to say that trans women aren't women. Okay. I'm just saying that those pussies that they got. You know what I mean? So he is saying that. That's exactly what he's saying. He's insinuating that their genitalia is mutilated. Talking about another person's body and making fun of the way their body is, is fucked up. You would hate that, Dave. If someone did that to you, you would hate that. You would get your panties in a twist. Oh, I'm sorry, that's probably too femme. Your boxes in a twist. It's dehumanizing to make fun of another person's body and make out like it's mutilated or less than the cisgendered type of body. Gender dysphoria is a thing and altering a person's body chemically or surgically or whatever is their prerogative and it helps them mentally. So if you saw a burns victim walk down the street, you wouldn't fucking joke about their body. You wouldn't do that because that's unkind. So why do it to a trans person? You're normalizing this bullshit behavior and it's not okay. We need to continue to make progress in being kind to trans people and people in the LGBTQIA plus community because as it stands, they are actively being murdered. They're murdered all the time, especially black trans women. I want your community to know that one of the coolest people I ever met was a transgender woman. Now this last story about Daphne, I, I will say that he's such a good storyteller and even though I have not agreed with a lot of his jokes, the way that he delivers his jokes is really good. Like he's funny. His facial expressions, the way he tells stories. I get it. He's a funny guy and you want to like him. And I do, I can't help it. I do like the guy when he's not being a cunt. You know what I'm saying? It's complex and there's nuances. You know what I mean? And it, it's sparking a broader conversation about trans issues. And I don't think he means harm. Okay, and I, I think he wins a lot of people back with this last story. And I think that's part of his brilliance as a comedian. However, <laughs> I think the story of Daphne is tragic um, because I believe that the reason that she killed herself was not because she got cancelled on Twitter, although that probably didn't help, but it was probably a compounding hate from the world. Trans people, again, like I have said, have to fight for their right to exist on a daily basis. And I'm sure Daphne was no exception. And maybe this canceling was the nail in the coffin. And the issue that I have with Dave and this story is that he continues to invalidate 
her transness. He misgenders her in the end as a joke. Like, (laughs) your father was the best woman I ever met. That's not great. That's not a great memory. And to continue to invalidate her gender, like when he says, you know, jumping off a building was the manliest thing he'd ever seen. Like, I think that is so cringy and I don't think it's a tribute to her memory. And maybe she would like all of the jokes or whatever, but trans people on a whole probably would not want to be remembered in that way and not want to be spoken about in that way. They wouldn't want to be misgendered. That's for fucking sure. And it's one thing to like for Daphne to joke about her transness, but it's another for a cis male to joke about um, another minority group. Like, I don't like it. Joke away about your own self and your own experiences and things that affect you and your groups, you know? But don't punch down, because that's what it is, on the trans community and the LGBTQIA plus community. You don't give a fuck about them or you, you don't seem to. I don't know. It's just annoying. I, here's the thing. I get the sense that Dave Chappelle is not a bad person. I get the sense that he cares about these things and and people in general. And I think if I met him, I would like him as a person. I think he would come across very kind. The jokes in this special and specials in the past continue to be homophobic and transphobic in their nature and problematic because they perpetuate false narratives. And those false narratives then lead to the harm of these communities. And I wonder why he does not get that or seem to like he's come into contact with people over and over again. He said himself, he comes into contact with people over and over again who want him to know how that his jokes make them feel and how they impact their lives. Like he insinuates he doesn't want to hurt anybody, but also doesn't fucking feel bad when he does it and actually defends his position. He even just sets it up. The whole purpose of the special was to just set up the the notion that if you react poorly to this, then you're proving him right. You're overreacting. It's gaslighting. Like there's a lot of inconsistencies with what he's saying and people are just going to, like his fans are just going to take what he's saying at face value and go, yep, that's real life. It's funny. And then you know, in real life, trans people are subjected to these kind of jokes and it's not funny to them. It's not funny at all. People won't get to know the trans community if they think that they're whiny bitches. They won't actively research these things themselves. They won't research the plight of trans people. He could have used his platform in such a better way to highlight the plight of trans people. Instead, he just ended up dehumanizing them and invalidating them completely and he won't give a fuck because he's made millions and Netflix is not going to take it down if they haven't taken down the rest of his shit they're not going to take this down here's my point it would be so not okay for a white man to get up and start spouting off racist shit that would be so unacceptable and Netflix would definitely not put that up I don't think so why is transphobia okay why is one minority group more important in being protected than another it's weird Transphobia is still normalized, whereas racism is not so. People have walked out at this point. They're over it. They are done. And the trans community are going to continue to progress. The world is going to continue to progress. And I believe eventually we will all be much more in tune with trans issues. Like the world is going today with women's issues. Things are becoming more and more spoken about on social media and it's actually contributing a lot to the growth of our our world yes cancel culture is not necessarily great but i also think are you really cancelled if you continue to have billions of dollars and a platform not really you're not a victim the people who get belted up and murdered are the victims the people who get discriminated against daily are the victims but go off dave i guess PC culture is not all that bad, I don't think. I think that people hold people to account and rich people don't necessarily like that. 
Anyway, I've spoken for hours or I've sat here for so long. Like, anyway, I, I feel like I haven't got across what I want to get across. And I feel like that every time I make a video, please sound off below what you think about Dave Chappelle's The Closer. Do you think that it's just comedy? Do stand up comedians get a pass when it comes to using their platform to speak about things? Do you think that they have responsibilities? around what they say like thank you so much for watching please leave a like leave a comment and if you haven't already do consider subscribing check out all my other videos and have a beautiful day i love y'all be kind peace